Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for tuning back in and welcome to every single stories about Kevin video that I've ever made <laughs> all in one big video. I love this subreddit so much and we've had so much fun on this subreddit like over the last year or so. And yeah, this video is a little bit of a celebration of that. Enjoy guys. Okay, so the top story on this entire subreddit is called my boss's stepson is a Kevin to end all Kevins. All right, let's do this. I'm excited. So just over a year ago, I switched jobs and went to work for a guy, Bob, who's running a new and used aquarium shop. The shop was built onto his house. So as a result, I've become pretty close with his family, including his 15 year old stepson, who is the most Kevin person I've ever met. For the first couple of months, I thought he was just a little bit quirky and clumsy. But as I've come to know him more, I've discovered that he is a Kevin of the highest order. Now, I've known some dumb teenagers in my time. Hell, I used to be one. But this kid is just on another level. Just in the year that I've known him, he licked a lit match because he thought fire would taste like a flaming hot Cheeto. Oh my god. <laughs> he cannot climb up a flight of stairs without tripping up them. This is a multiple times a day occurrence. He once dropped a bowl of cereal and milk and rather than clean the mess with a towel, he soaked up the spill with his sock. A sock that was still on his foot. He then put on the shoes, went out to catch the bus and went to school with a soaking wet milk sock. <laughs> he went to the school nurse that day because he was convinced that his foot was bleeding and soaking through his sock. Oh, buddy. <laughs> That's crazy. He wants to be the first pro-Trump rapper and he's currently pissed off at Kanye for stealing his idea. <laughs> oh, he sounds amazing. He's failing gym class. Well, like I did that. Who cares? I have no idea how one fails gym class. I literally did. So, um, you know, I'm sure he's not the only one. And by the way, you fail gym class by not going to it. <laughs> That's how I failed mine. He has broken more than 20... Oh my god! <laughs> he's broken more than 20 aquariums in the last year. Just the thought of him being at his stepdad's aquarium shop and breaking all the aquariums. Oh, that's amazing. I shouldn't laugh really, but you know, this is pretty funny. When we buy used tanks, they need to be washed and leak tested before we resell them. Kevin sometimes does this to help out, but can't understand that when you wrap the hose around an aquarium, you can't just yank it free. Oh no, he pulled them off tables and stuff. For reference, I've been in the aquarium hobby for 12 years and I've broken two. He's not allowed to clean tanks anymore. Bob was selling an older, fairly good condition Cadillac that had been sitting in his driveway for a while. The day before the buyer came to pick it up, Kevin was mowing the yard and scraped the handle of the mow along the entire length of the side of the car. Oh, what? He likes to use Jew as an insult. When I called him out on it, I discovered that he thought that Jewish people didn't actually exist. He thought that they were an imaginary race of people that everyone pretended to hate. Oh my God, I'm in disbelief right now. He played lacrosse on his school's team this summer and got benched all season because he told the coach that he didn't need to run laps or go to practice. This is probably why he's failed gym class. He left in the morning like normal to go catch the bus. Three hours later, he came back saying that he missed the bus and he needed to be driven to school. The problem? It was Labor Day. There was no school. He stood at the bus stop for three hours on a day when there was no school. He ate absolutely everything in sight. If you leave food unattended for more than 10 seconds, it's gone. I hate when people do that. <laughs> like I swear, man, that's my food and don't you touch it. Bob went to Taco Bell and got food for the four of us. Kevin was left alone with it and ate his, mine, Bob's and half of his mum's food before he realised that it probably wasn't all for him. Is this a real person? <laughs> Seriously? I understand why people like this subreddit. This is really fun. When he found out that I'm a chilli head, he bragged for a week about how he loves super spicy food too. He then tried a glob of my exhoresco? I don't know. <laughs> After I warned him repeatedly not to, and spent the next two hours crying and blaming me. I don't know whether I should be angry at this person or feel sorry for them, you know? Like, they're doing a lot of frustrating stuff. <laughs> We've been gradually remodeling the house when we're not working in the store. 
Kevin's bedroom was the first room we finished. He managed to put a hole in the wall on the first day he moved in. Oh, I'm getting mad. One day, completely out of the blue, he asked me, I know girls don't have a pee pee, but is there just like a hole beneath their belly button where a pee pee would be? Okay, just a little bit of bad women's anatomy. Bob told Kevin to wash the truck one day earlier this year. Kevin thought he'd be helpful and wash out the fuel tank as well with water. Is this Bart Simpson? <laughs> Who is this person? I'm just trying to think about how I would feel if somebody filled up my car with water. <laughs> oh my god. His school lets him rent a tablet for schoolwork. He got it taken away within a week because he was using it for you know what. I assume he wanted to find out if girls had a hole where a PP should be. His parents signed him up for tutoring to help with grades. Turns out all the tutoring in the world won't help your grades if you never turn in your homework. He was under the impression that homework was optional. Also, he routinely falls asleep in class. He thought that fish were just very active plants. Yes, really. Um, what? <laughs> I don't understand. He managed to tip over and dump the contents of the trash can he was taking out to the roadside to be picked up. Rather than pick up the mess, he just kicked it around and spread it across the yard. <laughs> in hopes that it would be less noticeable if the mess was less concentrated. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of amazing when you think about it. Just like the way that he thought about that. Like, no, I won't pick this back up. I'll just spread it out evenly. I know there's more I'm forgetting and I'll edit this post as I remember them. Or as Kevin gives me more material. I'll just leave you with this tidbit. Kevin starts driving in three months. May the gods have mercy on us all. Yeah, far out. Edit one. To everyone wondering if Kevin has some kind of undiagnosed mental health issues, I suppose it's possible, but it seems more like just a severe lack of common sense than anything else. I've never met his biological dad, but from what I've learned from his mum, he's one of those people who is habitually unemployed, yet spends all day complaining about how immigrants and minorities are a drain on society. I'm hoping Kevin will eventually grow out of his Kevin-ness and not follow in his dad's footsteps. Yeah, okay, so a severe lack of common sense. It's all starting to come together. Edit number two, November 10th, 2018. A couple more. One just happened this week, the other apparently happened a couple of months ago, and Bob just told me about it. Oh, so the stepdad's talking about it as well. Kevin decided that he was going to practice blacksmithing by removing the leaf catcher bag from the lawnmower and bending the hell out of the metal frame. He then realised after the fact that he was probably going to get in trouble for ruining the leaf catcher, so he decided to burn the bag and throw the frame in the trash. Bob found out, of course, and Kevin has spent the last week complaining about how tedious Yes, it is to manually rake the leaves out of the yard. Well, dude, you shouldn't have been practicing your blacksmithing and completely ruined it. <laughs> Listen, I've played Skyrim before and I've seen the blacksmiths before and I've never seen them with a leaf catcher. Kevin discovered that you can take things apart with a screwdriver and decided to disassemble the blender with his newfound knowledge. Is this guy just trying to be a nuisance? Like seriously, this is out of this world. He took the entire thing apart and had no idea how to put it back together again. So he left the pieces all over the counter. When his parents asked him why he did it, he first denied that it was him and then claimed that the blender just randomly fell apart for no reason. Edit 3 April 12th, 2019 Since this is getting a bit of attention today here's an update on how Kevin's 2019 has been so far. Are we going to get an update every year? This is amazing. Kevin has not started driving yet and he likely won't be for at least another year. Bob bought him an old Jeep that needed repairs before for it was drivable and Kevin managed to knock one of the side mirrors off his bicycle. I have no idea how. Kevin has decided to start writing a fantasy novel and in a moment of weakness I volunteered to be his beta reader. He then told me that it's going to be an erotic orc fiction with swords. Should we read that on the channel? He was making a grilled cheese sandwich and decided to experiment and put peanut butter on it. He burnt the peanut butter, set off the smoke alarm, ate half of it, gagged, threw it in the trash and then dug it out of the trash and ate the rest of it. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> 
This is great. He isn't allowed to have a cell phone because he's still failing a number of classes and he's too easily distracted by technology. So he's been going to Walmart and buying the cheapest phone they have and hiding it from his parents. The problem is that he hides it in his pocket and doesn't know how to silence the ringtones. He's had at least three phones taken away from him. He got a blunt from one of his friends at school, smoked it and then told his parents that the smell was his new cologne. And that's all that there is here. I honestly don't know how to feel right now. Like part of me feels bad. The other part of me feels angry. I'm also very confused. <laughs> all in all, that was amazing. Okay, this next one is called I Fired Kevin After One Day of Amazing Stupidity. This was originally posted on Ask Reddit and someone suggested I post it here. Probably one of the stupidest people I've ever met. He was a 26 year old male and turned up an hour and a half late the first day. He was brought in by his mum, which I thought was kinda odd for a grown man. I let that slide, but then things just got worse. I was a small roadside cafe eatery, so I thought I'd get him to start on small duties to ease him into the way of the place. I asked him to put new toilet paper in the toilets. A minute or so later, I hear him yelling, Oh, <laughs> it won't fit on the toilet roll holder. I'm like, what? That's a pretty simple thing. He calls out again, so I tell him to bring it to me so I can show him. He's carrying a roll of paper towel. <laughs> it's almost three times the length of the toilet paper holder. Kevin, I say, that's paper towel. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Have you ever seen toilet paper that big in your life? Uh, no. Right. Furthermore, and probably more perplexing, can you not see that this massive roll couldn't possibly fit on this small bar? Yeah, I thought that was odd. Oh boy, well, the day goes on and after the kitchen is pretty much closed, except for pre-cooked baked goods, I get him to give a general clean and ask to make sure he wipes down all the benches. I leave him to it as I assume he's doing fine. Karong! <laughs> One of the other staff comes and says that we've run out of toilet paper. And I'm like, what? That's not possible. Sure enough, all the packs are torn open and empty, except for the rolls on the holders. At this stage, I realize there can only be one culprit, and I call Kevin over. Did you do something with the toilet paper? What the hell is with this guy and toilet paper? Yes, I used it to wipe down the benches in the kitchen. You used eight rolls of toilet paper to wipe down the benches in the kitchen? Why are you using toilet paper to wipe down the benches? I don't like using dishcloth. Who taught you to wipe down benches with toilet paper? Have you ever seen anyone wipe down benches with toilet paper? Oh, the cloth was dirty and I didn't want to clean it out. By this stage, I'm thinking the day's nearly over. Just let it go and I'm sure it will work out fine. Yeah, you know what's coming. Kevin strikes again. And this time it's beyond moronic. So I've got him on serving customers pastries and the like because all you have to do is take out of the glass bay, put it on a plate and give it to them. He doesn't even have to ring it up, just pop it on a plate and give. Well, one of the customers orders three scones with jam and cream. He's behind the counter doing his thing and I have a little peek and see. Yes, he's cut them in half and managed to put jam and cream on them. About a minute later, the customer brings the scones back to the counter. There's something really hard in these scones. I bit down and it was like crunching on a rock or something. Of course, I'm puzzled. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. When Kevin cuts in, it's probably just the seeds in the jam. Now, there's something about the way he says this that makes my alarm bells ring. Show me what you put on those scones and I start marching towards the prep bench. Sitting on the bench is the bowl of whipped cream and next to it in a plastic bag is a broken glass jar which contains the jam. This mother flipper is feeding the customer broken glass. I didn't think it would be a big deal. Are you insane? I grabbed the plate of mostly uneaten glass infused scones. How is anyone supposed to eat this? To my utter, utter amazement, he proceeds to eat them in front of me, all the while crunching on glass and flinching every time he does. Oh my god, I'm paralyzed and dumbfounded. When he finishes eating them, he says, do you think I should go to the hospital? You're fired. <laughs> The seeds in the jam? Oh, that one made me want to cry. I don't understand any of this sort of stuff. Like, how could you actually think like this? Insanity. Wow. And so apparently he dropped the glass of jam and then just put it all in a bag and decided to use the jam anyway, even though it was full of broken glass. 
This subreddit is unbelievable. Okay, on to the next one. Kevin thinks that house broken means doesn't pee indoors no matter what. My fiance and I were planning a weekish long vacation and we needed someone to watch our dog. We asked our buddy Kevin because our dog really likes him and she's not inclined to like many other people. Our dog is a six pound chihuahua who likes to sleep under blankets on the couch. So aside from feeding her and taking her out, she's not particularly high maintenance. My fiance gave him the rundown and he expressed concerns about our dog's level of house training because he seems to be under the impression that small dogs are impossible to housebreak. We assured him that she was. She knows to go outside and will do so as long as he lets her out. The day after we dropped our dog off, we got a text message from Kevin informing us that our dog was in fact not housebroken because she had peed on his carpet while he was at work. We asked when the last time he let her out was and he replied that he hadn't let her out since we dropped her off the day before. My fiance got annoyed and told Kevin that yes, she is housebroken, but she has to be given the opportunity to do her business outside. She can't open the door herself, so someone has to let her out. If she's not let out, then she'll relieve herself when she physically can't hold it anymore. Kevin replied that housebroken means housebroken, and she shouldn't be relieving herself indoors under any circumstances whatsoever. For the rest of the week, we got at least one text a day informing us how our dog soiled his carpet yet again. My fiance told him the same thing each time, take her outside. His response was some variation of the same stupid logic he had spewed before. Oh my god, dude, please Google what housebroken means. This is so frustrating. When we arrived at Kevin's house to pick up our dog, the second we walked through the door, he shoved some cleaning spray and scrubbing brush into my fiance's hands. Oh no, he's upset. He said, your untrained dog made this mess, so you clean it up. Kevin had apparently spent the whole week covering up our dog's messes with a paper towel, expecting us to clean it up when we returned. Oh my god, what? My fiance was livid. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I would be too. She threw the spray and brush at him, yelled back, you didn't let my dog out for a week. You clean it up. She picked up our dog and stormed to the car. I stuck around just long enough to gather the dog supplies we left for him. We've hardly spoken to him since and he certainly won't be watching watching our dog again. Yeah, and surely he's realized that that's not what housebroken means. Like, bro, what's wrong with you? <laughs> a dog can't open the door by itself. Of course it's gonna pee up. Like, did he want that to happen? Surely it's obvious that a dog's just not gonna let itself out. Crazy. <laughs> okay, let's do one more and then that'll do us for today. Kevin asks where the frozen turkeys are on Thanksgiving Day. Gets mad when I tell him where they are. Honestly, was originally gonna to post this on Tales from Retail, but when I was telling my friend about the story, they said that this would be a better place for it, so here I am. I work at a grocery store that always gets slammed during the day of a major holiday, or day before if we aren't open on the holiday in question, because every other chain store would be sold out from last minute panic buying as well. I was just finishing up restocking what I could in the baking aisle, since that's where most of the demand comes from, and I was about to start getting ready to close when a Kevin came up and asked me where are your frozen turkeys? They'd be in the frozen food section in the little bunker in the middle of the aisle, I politely said, albeit questioning why anyone would buy a frozen turkey at 4pm on Thanksgiving Day. They wouldn't be able to cook it fully unless they deep fried it immediately once they came home, and that was still a snowball's chance in hell. No, 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 the Kevin said. I don't mean those frozen turkeys, I mean the other kind of frozen turkey. Right? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I said. Those are the only frozen turkeys turkeys we have. If you wish, we might have some hams in our meat department that are thawed and should be good by your Thanksgiving dinner. I don't want a stupid ham. I want a proper frozen turkey. Your hams are properly frozen yet. I see no turkeys. It was then I realized that he meant refrigerated turkeys, not frozen ones. Sir, we don't sell refrigerated turkeys. We only have the ones in our frozen section. Why wouldn't you have a good and proper frozen turkey, Kevin asked, infuriated by the simple information given to him. This popular chain superstore sells them and they're all sold out. Because they're a ginormous superstore while we're a much smaller grocery store, I explained. Now, unless you have another question, I need to get back to work. Kevin left in a huff, muttering something about how we lost a customer because we didn't sell what he wanted. I let out a sigh of relief before hearing someone behind me ask, excuse me, sir, where are your frozen turkeys? I nearly lost my head before recognizing the voice as my grandfather's. 
who apparently was listening the whole conversation while choosing a refrigerated ham for Thanksgiving dinner. We laughed for a while about it before I had to go get ready to close up the store and he had to go back to his house and get ready for Thanksgiving. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, this first one is called My Nephew's Long Weekend of Astounding Stupidity. As I type this up, Kevin is hiding in his room because we were mean to him after his actions this weekend. And all we did was tell him to go to one room and stay there so he wouldn't ruin anything else. Kevin is 20. No, this will not make sense when you read the full account of the weekend's events, but believe me, this guy is 20. Me, 29 male, my brother, 40 male, and his son Kevin, my nephew, 20 male, were all going to visit my and my brother's parents over the long weekend. On Friday morning, Kevin kicked the weekend of insanity off by peeing himself on the drive to our parents and grandparents' house. His explanation was that he just really needed it and they didn't have bathrooms in this country. Iowa has bathrooms and it's not a different country. <laughs> we were driving from Chicago to western Nebraska. Upon arriving in our tiny Nebraska town, one change of pants later, Kevin decided it would be funny to call the town sheriff a bumpkin when he came to say hi to my brother and I. We also made the mistake of going to visit the little corner grocery store. We visit at least once a year so we still know everyone in town to say hi and leaving Kevin alone to walk around town. He immediately tried to scale the town water tower. That reminds me so much of um what's eating Gilbert Grape because he goes and climbs the water tower doesn't he? He got about 20 feet up before starting to cry. He yelled out for the sheriff and probably regretted referring to him as a bumpkin an hour earlier. Next we paid a visit to church and we kept Kevin within our view at all times. He still managed to steal a bible from the church. We made him return it. Dude, stealing a Bible? <laughs> That's like extra bad. As we settled in at home that evening for dinner, Kevin repeatedly mocked his grandparents for being rural folk and spoke in a dramatic southern accent to mock them. We are nowhere near the south in Nebraska. <laughs> oh my god. Kevin put a baseball in the cavity of a roast chicken. No further explanation needed. He repeatedly joked at the family dinner on Friday night about putting a boot into a woman's, uh, you know. As you can imagine, his Christian rural grandparents didn't find this funny. Next up was Saturday. He made it clear that he was dumber than a bag of hammers with a literal box of hammers. He went into the tool shed at 6am before any of us were even up and dropped a box of hammers on his toe. We were soon up and my dad fell down and broke his hand as he was scrambling out of the house when he heard Kevin shrieking. With two broken bones in the family, we tried to sell Saturday. Kevin immediately ruined it by playing Lil Nas X song, yeah, the Satan one, in front of grandma and grandpa on the family TV. Sunday morning, he farted really loud during a quiet moment in church. <laughs> oh my god. Then said, Satan is in my ass in earshot of an entire town. Oh my god, this is amazing. He also stole another Bible. We made him give it back along with the first one. Sunday morning, he walked up to the police station holding a grape soda and eating a watermelon. Oh god, thinking his racist caricature would be funny. He yelled to the sheriff, aren't you gonna kneel on my neck? Look, I'm a N. I'm sure you can feel this part in. Oh no. Not to be outdone by his racism was his sexism. On Monday morning, he let us all know that female soldiers aren't real. They're just there for relief of the male soldiers. Yeah. To cap off this amazing weekend, Kevin spent Monday afternoon peeing in my parents' garden. He said that there was nowhere else to go. There are two bathrooms in the house. Christ, I think my brother may not be a great parent. Oh my. There's so much more I need to know about this. <laughs> but like, that's the end of the story. Oh my god, that's insane. <laughs> I have so much secondhand embarrassment right now. Okay, on to the next one. This one is called Kevin thinks I'm cheating on my husband. The Kavina I work with is a lovely lady, but a bit clueless. In addition to that, she refuses to take hints. As an example, she became a huge fan of the show The Expanse, and she tried every single day to make me watch it. I told her over and over that my husband had watched
watched it and I'd glanced at a few episodes over his shoulder, but while I could see that it was an amazing show, it just wasn't my cup of tea. That didn't work. She kept trying to make me watch it. Finally, in some desperation, I said, if you want to talk about the show with other people, have you tried Reddit? She'd never heard of Reddit, so I explained. There are discussion threads for every topic you can possibly imagine. I guarantee there will be some about The Expanse. She seemed interested and said that she'd check it out. Fast forward a couple of months, Kevina and I were discussing some random topic, and I said I saw a post about it on Reddit. She got a very weird look on her face and said, accusingly, what were you doing on Reddit? Puzzled, I said, why shouldn't I be? She said angrily, oh gee, I don't know, maybe because you're married? Now I was even more puzzled and I asked, what's that got to do with it? She looked a little less certain and said, well, it's a dating site, isn't it? Turned out that she'd completely forgotten our previous conversation and had Reddit confused with Tinder. Oh my god, no, Reddit is not a dating site. I bloody hope not anyway. We look at a few neckbeards that would probably like it to be a dating site, but it's not. Okay, next one. We thought this was a prank. This just happened tonight. I was working inside, making pizzas and taking orders. When my manager turns to me looking utterly confused, I ask what's up and he says he thinks the next order is going to be a prank call that we won't make money on. I ask why he's so sure and he says there's four reasons. One, the order is for a delivery to the restaurant less than 500 feet away from our store. No joke, we walk over there sometimes to get food and come back before needing to clock out for a 15 minute break. This means they'll have to pay an extra $5 instead of walking or driving or having someone else drive to get it. And two, they ordered the classic Kevin order, two pizzas, both half cheese and half pepperoni, instead of just ordering one full cheese and one full pepperoni. Three, they ordered one large pizza and one medium pizza. That means they can't even get a two mediums or two larges deal, which the restaurant definitely knows about. And four, some ex-employees of that restaurant work for us now and their friends may be trying to play a good-natured prank on us. So we waited to hear back from the driver and to all of our surprise, it was real. No prank, no problem paying. The Kevin just signed and took it. People confuse me. Wow, surely that's like going out of your way to make no sense. Why are there so many people that are like that? Yeah, the whole two pizzas with half cheese and half pepperoni. Like, you'd think that they'd realize that they could just get a pepperoni pizza and a cheese pizza. Why are you being annoying for no reason? This subreddit is so good. I think this could be my favorite thing to read about. This next one is called Kevin Destroys the Dorm and it's a little bit of a longer story, so that'll be good. Not the whole dorm, mind you, but definitely chunks of it. I can only assume that Kevin's parents sent him away to college to prevent him from destroying what was left of their own home. I vaguely knew him as one of my roommate's friends, but he quickly gained a reputation. By the end of the school year, it was just assumed that if something around the dorms was broken, it was Kevin's fault. I heard that the repair bill cost more than his first year tuition. Oh my god. The first week in the dorms, Kevin leaned against a large window. Lucky for him, it was a ground floor window, so when it broke under his weight and he fell through it, he was fine. The 300 other students living in the building obviously noticed the cardboard over the lobby window and quickly spread the story. Maybe a month later, I came home from class. Go to push the up elevator button and it's gone. It was an older building with the older fashioned elevator buttons that stuck out from the wall. The up button was entirely missing. Just a little round spot where it used to be. So with some confusion, I pushed the down button to summon the elevator, got in, pushed the button from my floor, and went up to ask my roommate if she'd noticed the busted elevator button. Ah, oh, that was just Kevin, she says. He was goofing around and tried to push the button with his foot, but instead kicked it off the wall. The admin's pretty annoyed at him about it. Q300 students having to take occasional trips to the basement to the bemusement of the janitors because we all had to push the down button to go up for weeks. Oh, this is so frustrating. But the most kevin -y episode was the great popcorn fiasco. Oh, here we go. One night, Kevin decides he wants popcorn after the campus stores had already closed for the night. Apparently, Kevin was so insistent about wanting popcorn that somebody gave him a bunch of mini-sized bags of microwave popcorn. But what Kevin wanted was a whole bunch of popcorn right that second. So he came up with a plan. I got to hear the details of the plan once the entire building was evacuated and we were all shivering out in the cold, waiting for the fire department to finish extinguishing flames from the upper floors and air smoke out of the entire building. See, each floor of the dorm had two tiny kitchens, except the top seventh, which only 
only had one. Kevin went up to the top floor, put a mini bag into the microwave, hit the popcorn button and ran down the stairs. Put mini bags in each microwave on that floor, hit the popcorn buttons, ran down the stairs again. By the time he got down to the ground floor, the microwave on the top floor was on fire. And by the time the fire department showed up, four more microwaves were on fire. Oh no. I don't even know who this is and I'm so frustrated. Oh, it makes me mad. Kevin, what are you doing? This is so much fun because like you can't even imagine that somebody could be that stupid. <laughs> but here they are. Okay, let's do one more really short one. Okay, this one is called I had the ultimate Kevina moment all by myself this morning and no one saw. I do stuff like that all the time. I went to pour a bath and I couldn't see the plug. I thought to myself, that's okay. I'll put it in after the bath finishes pouring. Turn the taps on and left the room. I came back 10 minutes later to a still empty bath. <laughs> oh, that's okay because at least you recognize how stupid that is. You know, most of these Kevins think they're doing the right thing. First story is called a beef is meat. I knew a Kavina in college. She wasn't the brightest and she believed some of the most ridiculous things. The one time that stands out to me the most in my mind was once when we were at a restaurant. Kavina was always telling us that she was vegetarian. She wasn't quite rabid about it but was always touting the health benefits of going vegetarian and how she'd been one since she was in elementary school and it was going great. Well, I went out to eat once with a small group of friends plus Kavina. We all placed our orders and I was surprised when she ordered a cheeseburger. After the waiter left, I asked me, so you aren't vegetarian anymore? Kavina, I'm vegetarian. I'm not vegan. I eat dairy and eggs, me, but the burger is made of beef. Kavina, yeah, and? <laughs> me, you know beef is cow meat, right? Kavina, no, it's not. <laughs> Turns out Kavina was never really a vegetarian. She thought that because beef, pork, and mutton weren't called by the same name as the animals that they come from, they weren't meat. <laughs> she had been avoiding chicken, turkey, fish, lamb, veal, because she somehow heard veal was from baby cows, goat, etc. But all the while eating beef, pork, bacon, and mutton, etc. <laughs> oh no. It turns out her parents were mostly to blame for this, initially anyway. She came home from school one day dead set on being a vegetarian. They didn't want to give up meat, so they convinced her that these certain meats weren't meat. Oh, that's awful. But she made it to her freshman year of college without having this bubble burst. I have not a clue. After we convinced her that we were telling her the truth, this was the early 2000s, so none of us had smartphones. We had to go to her dorm and make her type, what is beef, pork, bacon, and mutton into Google. She tried to go vegetarian, but decided it was too much of a hassle, as we kept informing her that certain things she really liked eating and drinking weren't vegetarian. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, but so unfortunate. Why would parents do that? That's awful. Oh my god. <laughs> that was so fun to read, though. And the fact that they went that long without figuring it out is amazing. But yeah, obviously, the parents shouldn't say stuff like that. If your kid wants to go vegetarian, you can't convince them that meat isn't meat. That's awful. Okay, this next one is really long. My roommate Kevin, a force of nature. Okay, gang, some of you wanted more stories about my former roommate Kevin, so I've compiled some here that I think you'll enjoy. This is a long post, so buckle up. But first, I'd like to explain a few things about Kevin and our living arrangement. Me and Kevin had been casual friends for about two years prior to us living together for a year. It was his apartment and I just rented a room in it. Ultimately, I had no say in some of the shenanigans he got up to because his name was on the lease. I mean, I did try to talk him out of it, but Kevin was a determined and motivated lad with a passion for destruction. I don't think Kevin had any mental issues. His Kevinness was just the perfect combination of cluelessness, arrogance, impatience, curiosity, and a healthy dose of bad genes. I do love the lad and he was a good friend, but living with him and constantly worrying for him made me absolutely insane. Enjoy. Kevin can't remember his passwords. Kevin would always forget his password for everything. Not remembering a password isn't a Kevin thing, but it 
is if you only have one password for everything and that specific password is tattooed into your left arm. He would sit there for a few seconds thinking and then he would remember the tattoo. But where was it again? He would search his arm every day, eventually find it, <laughs> type it in and then exclaiming, oh, thank God. Wait, so he would forget where the tattoo was? <laughs> oh, no. In Kevin's defense, he had a massive sleeve and he wouldn't be able to see the password if you just looked at the tattoos quickly. So it wasn't on full display for the world to see. But I knew where it was by heart and he didn't. So there you go. Kevin thought that all gingers smelled the same. <laughs> what? Yes, Kevin was convinced that all gingers smelled the same. He described it as the scent of sour milk and didn't want to be near anyone with red hair. He went through a lot of trouble to avoid them. One time he was supposed to take the train and ended up getting off on the wrong stop because a ginger had sat down next to him. He was stranded in the middle of nowhere for half a day, but happy with his decision. Why didn't he just find another seat? Who knows? Kevin was lactose intolerant, but thought he could hack his body. He figured if he kept eating food containing lactose, he would eventually become immune. He did this during the three years that I knew him, and he did not become immune. In fact, I witnessed him poop his pants on numerous occasions. Oh, this is amazing. Speaking of crap, Kevin was banned from the local water park. So the story goes that Kevin and his cousin, who from what I hear is also a Kevin, had been there when they were 15, 16. There is no delicate way of phrasing what happens next, so I'm just going to be blunt. The Kevins decided to, you know what, in the shallow pool full of small children to see how long it would be before someone noticed the two logs and blamed one of the little kids. But since this is a story about two Kevins, y'all already know it doesn't end well for them. They were found out immediately after doing it in the pool because one of the lifeguards had seen them giggling entering the pool and grown suspicious. Oh, icky, icky, gross, gross, yuck. That is so gross. <laughs> I'm never going to a pool ever again. Kevin and his secret bottle. As I stated in this post, Kevin didn't like unnecessary trips anywhere. If he could do the thing he was supposed to do without taking any steps, that would be ideal. So Kevin had concocted the most elegant plan. Sometimes during the night, we all have to go. Most people get up and walk to the bathroom, but Kevin wasn't like most people. He had a special pee bottle under his bed. It was mostly used for night time, he assured me. But sometimes when he was playing video games, he used it too. Oh, this is getting worse. <laughs> that is so gross. Just get up and go to the toilet. Kevin ordered a sex doll. He decided on a whim that he wanted one, but the lady wasn't in stock and he sure as hell wasn't going to hump a man. So he ordered a sheep and humped that instead. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> There's no way this is real. How did you know that? Surely not. Oh, guys, I'm terrified right now. Kevin loved messing with metal. Kevin became inspired by TV shows where people would make things. One particularly terrifying session of complete madness inspired by these TV shows was when Kevin tried to melt precious metals in the living room. In the show, people found old electronics and extracted the gold, silver, and other metals from them and sold it. Kevin liked this very much and tried it with his stereo. He took it apart and found some metal that he figured was silver. It was attached to plastic which he couldn't remove so he decided to melt it indoors with a tiny lighter. I walked in on him burning the plastic. He was sitting on the floor with all this junk around him saying, oh, over and over as the lighter burned his thumb. Black smoke rising from the plastic. I tried to reason with him saying that breathing in plastic is bad. He didn't care but eventually stopped as he grew impatient. Oh no, it wouldn't have been silver anyway. And you're not going to melt it with a lighter. <laughs> oh no. It turned out that the metal he was trying to extract was steel. This was not the only time he tried this. I can't even remember how many times Kevin was trying to mess with metals and plastic in the living room. Oh god, I can't believe this. I need to make more videos on this subreddit. Kevin didn't believe in World War II. 
Blue. He was a firm believer that World War II was just fiction, pretty much. He had read a conspiracy theory about the Holocaust being fake and believed every word of it. This was true for most things. If it was on the internet, he would believe it. Oh, that's really not good. There's so much stuff on the internet that isn't true. Kevin read a book called The Game and told a girl that she looked like a giant ham. <laughs> <laughs> what? Apparently in the book, the author tells you to be ever so slightly mean to a woman and this will somehow make her like you. Are we on the nice guy subreddit? Kevin was not familiar with ever so slightly. He found a girl that he thought was cute. She was wearing fishnet stockings and was a bit heavy, just the way he liked them. He told her that she looked like a massive uncooked ham inside a net and then laughed at her. Kevin got slapped in the face. Face. I doubt he's read a book ever since. Oh no, so it doesn't have any common sense. I don't know whether to be worried or to laugh or both at the same time. Kevin and the beeswax. Another time Kevin got inspired by a TV show was when someone talked about beeswax. Kevin learned that you could one, make candles with it, boring, two, eat it, boring, three, use it as glue, kinda fun, four, waterproof things like boots with it, somehow more fun than glue, Kevin didn't quite understand condensation and was always complaining about how our windows would fog up. He thought if he waterproofed the windows with beeswax, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> no. So he smeared melted beeswax everywhere on all the windows and the wood in the hopes that it would keep the fog from coming in. Again, his apartment, I didn't have a say in this. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you just let this happen? Oh no, I love this. Obviously, the beeswax eventually hardened and all the windows were streaked with it, but the silver lining, the living room no longer smelled like burnt plastic. It smelled like burnt plastic and beeswax. Kevin and his sword. I'm having so much fun. Sigh. He had this sword. It was barely even a sword. He made it himself during one of his TV-inspired adventures. This person sounds like so much fun. He tried to make an actual sword but gave up after he couldn't figure out how to make metal glow. His words, not mine. Yeah, you probably need more than a little lighter so he could bend it. Instead, he just cut open a beer can and super glued the sharp metal pieces to a thick stick that he had sanded down. That's so dangerous too. Oh, this is so good. Anyway, he kept the ugliest sword in the world in his car for protection. Kevin was a large lad with a lot of tattoos and a hint of insanity in his eyes, so people rarely messed with him, but it made him feel safe. He did get in trouble for it though, but that's a long story for another time. Oh, that was so good. Wow. This subreddit is bloody amazing. Okay, the first one we're gonna read today is called Kevin Broke the Internet. I lived in a fraternity and Kevin was my roommate. To be fair, Kevin is brilliant with anything related to computers. Computers. But to be equally fair, Kevin is brilliant with absolutely nothing else. Oh no. Kevin has decided that the five desktop computers that he has somehow fit under his twin bed are no longer sufficient. Kevin decides to custom build a monstrosity of a computer to replace all of the desktops. While I was gone at class, Kevin has decided that there's not enough space in our room for the ogre he is building. Building. So he moves my bed out into the hallway. Kevin has gone to the computer store when I get back and see this. I return the favor by moving my bed back in and his bed out to the front yard. A fraternity brother is taking a nap on it when... <laughs> Oh my god. A fraternity brother is taking a nap on it when Kevin returns and has a fit. Kevin keeps on tripping the circuit breaker. His computer is drawing way more current than it was designed for. And then Kevin tries to solve this problem by placing a gas generator precariously on the window and plugging it into that. This does work until a variety of bugs and one very confused squirrel attempt to make our room their new home. 
I tell Kevin that the generator has got to go, which of course results in him having a new fit. Kevin has hired an electrician to install a new circuit for our room just for his computer. It's winter and the average temperature outside is in the negatives. Our room now requires no heater. The computer is so large and energy intensive that if we don't open up the window with the snow outside, the room turns into a sauna. Our fraternity rents our internet from the university. I'm on door duty and the IT guy knocks on the door. He tells me that he thinks there's either an error or a hardware malfunction as it shows that our single house is consuming a substantial portion of the <laughs> of the entire university's bandwidth. I show him to the router box. He confirms that there is no error. Our house is indeed consuming a large amount of data. He tells me that I have 72 hours to solve this problem or the university will both throttle our speed way down and put a cap on our overall data. I head straight to Kevin. Kevin is trying to argue that the billion files he's downloading are encrypted so IT has no idea what the data is. It takes a while for Kevin to understand that IT doesn't care what he's downloading but that if he continues this behavior there'll be no internet for him or anyone else in the entire house. Kevin now works for NASA. No way! <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. I was not expecting that. <laughs> what? So yeah, this person is a total Kevin, but it's okay because they happen to know a lot about computers and they landed a job with NASA. That's so awesome. Do they still have the job with NASA? Are they going to do anything stupid? <laughs> I feel like a NASA would be the wrong place to make a big mistake. That's so strange that at the end of this, they're working for NASA. That's so awesome. I just did not see that coming. Okay, on to the next story called Kevin Doesn't Know How Dogs Work. My next door neighbors have two pit bull dogs. They are super cute and they're giant teddy bears. Well, that is until you try to come on my porch or their porch and they don't know you. If that's the case, they'll stand there barking their heads off, but they'll ultimately do nothing. All bark, no bite, so to speak. So I was outside getting ready to start shoveling snow. My husband was gathering the garbage to take out and then he would be out to help. So I was shoveling what I could while waiting for him and the dogs were out on their porch for a bit and I was talking to them. I was saying their names Duke and Princess. Some guy that does not live in the neighborhood was out for a walk I guess. He stopped and he asked why I call them that. I said it's their names. He said yes but why did you name them that? I explained that they're not my dogs and that they're my neighbor's dogs. That I just know their names from speaking to my neighbors. At that point I started trying to look busy while cursing my husband under my breath for taking so long. I'm nervous about talking to strangers during a pandemic and then I glanced up and the man is still standing there just looking at the dogs. I said that they just bark and they can't get out and even if they did they're harmless. You're fine. The man said well this is just so ridiculous. He pauses. I try to ignore. After a few seconds he said who the heck would name a pit bull princess? I sighed and I said why not? Yeah why are they upset about this? Who cares? I was thinking that he was going to be one of those pit bull hating people that found it stupid that anyone would give it a nice name. But then what he said, this grown man looked at me and said, princess is a girl's name. I was confused and I said, yeah, she's a girl. This fully grown man looked at me and laughed, not a quick ha ha kind of laugh, like a 30 or 40 second long laugh. And then he dropped this bomb. Pit bulls can't be girls. <laughs> What? I just said, uh, what? He repeated this. I said, how do you think the pit bulls puppies are made? This man told me that breeds weren't made or even breeded. Two dogs had babies and their breed was assigned depending on things like gender, muscle mass, and other physical and personality <laughs> characteristics. Pit bulls, Dobermans, Rottweilers, Labs, Retrievers, and some others are always boy dogs. Pomeranian Poodles, Yorkies, and other small dogs were females. This man seemed to be older than me, so I'm guessing 50s. He seemed sober and put together, but this man thinks a bunch of breeds are only male. 
male and another bunch are only female? I asked him to explain crossbreeds like Labradoodle and Puggles. He looked at me like my hair was on fire. I quit. I went inside and told my husband a crazy... <laughs> and told my husband a crazy man is outside and we should just stay in for a bit. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, obviously pit bulls are only males because that makes sense. <laughs> I don't understand how someone could believe something like that and not just quickly double check if they're right. <laughs> they do, they've lived their entire life believing a lie and they don't even worry about making sure if it's right or not. They could Google search for like five seconds and it'd be like, no. <laughs> there are definitely male and female male dogs out there of the same breed. Oh, that's so good. I think we should do one more story today, guys. This one is called Kevin Scores a Zero Twice on the Same Test. I teach at the college level. Years back, I taught a freshman sophomore class that met every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. One Wednesday, I gave a chapter exam. It was easy. I had a word bank of 25 terms and concepts at the top of the test, and the 20 questions of the exam were different definitions or descriptions of those terms. All the students had to do was match the corresponding term from the word bank to its definition or description. With five unused terms left over in the word bank, all the correct answers were right there. That Wednesday, almost half of my class was missing. There was a university function going on and no one thought to mention it to me. This was before emails were prevalent. I gave the test anyway. Kevin was there and took the test. He answered all 20 and got them all wrong, a zero. That Friday, I told the class that those who took the test Wednesday didn't have to show up for class on Monday. Those who missed the test because of the school function were to show up and take the test on Monday. And as I let the class out, I called Kevin to me and told him that as far as I was concerned, he was not there Wednesday. He was to show up and take the test Monday. He looked at me for a second and said, huh? Oh, thank you. I didn't even bother making a new version of the test. It was just the leftover copies of the original test. Kevin took the test Monday. Again, he answered all 20 and again he got all 20 wrong. And he answered all but maybe two or three of them differently. When I handed them back out, I gave him both of his. At the end of the semester, Kevin tried to bribe me with $100 to give him an A in the class. Yeah, I don't know though. I can kind of relate to this one a little bit too hard. I definitely feel like this is something that I would have done. I'm not dumb or anything, but I'm really bad at taking tests and I'm really bad at taking exams. I can remember doing well like all year, but as soon as we had a test, I just could not remember anything. So all the teachers like thought I was a moron, but I wasn't really that dumb. <laughs> so I was sort of not dumb, but like everybody thought I was dumb. Hey, maybe this story's about me. Guys, I've had so much fun today. I really hope you have too. Kevin does not understand why you need a driver's license to drive a car. I met Kevin at uni where he was studying nursing, which is in itself incredibly concerning. We were taking the same course and had to do some group projects together. During one of these group meetings, it somehow came up that Kevin had A, failed his driving test several times, and B, had bought a car and was driving it to school every day. What followed was the most amazing maddening circular conversation I have ever been a part of. Kevin could not comprehend what was so wrong with him driving a car. It went a little something like this. Me, you can't drive without a license. Kevin, yes I can. I drive to school every day. Me, but you don't have a license. Oh no, I didn't pass the test. Yeah, so you can't drive. Yeah, I still drive. It's fine. It's illegal and dangerous to drive without a license. Oh, no, it's fine. I haven't been in any accidents. No, but it's a crime. No, it's not. I haven't been arrested, so it's fine. And we repeated this five times. A few months after that, I heard that he got expelled for plagiarism, which was probably for the best. <laughs> wow, that's so funny. Not that he got expelled. That's not funny. Actually, no, it's also not funny that somebody drives without a license. <laughs> that's really dangerous, but it's funny 
that they just thought they were doing everything completely fine. Funny and terrifying because I wonder how many people out there are like this. Like, yeah, nah, bro, it's totally fine. I haven't even been pulled over yet. You know, like the thought process that because you haven't been pulled over, as in like you haven't been caught yet, so you're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> that makes no sense. Okay, the next story is called Don't Eat Bros Cooking. My brother is a Kevin in many ways, but he is especially Kevinish with food. On a visit to our grandparents, he insisted that pancakes were best with French dressing instead of syrup, and grandpa was out of touch to think that anyone still used syrup. Bro then drowned his pancakes in French dressing. Grandpa made him eat it after a few bites. Bro was begging not to have to eat that mess. Yeah, like obviously people don't do that. <laughs> that sounds really gross. When he was 16, he got a job in a diner. He was not a cook. One day he swore that Western omelettes are made with pickle relish. It looks like green pepper, but it's always pickle relish no matter where you go for one. By that time, I was 14. I pretty much refused to eat anything that bro cooked. He was nice and fixed dinner for the entire family that night. Because I questioned his expertise in cooking, he made us eat a Western omelette using pickle relish. He didn't tell our parents what he did and just said that they were Western omelettes. Both parents spit out the first bite and asked him, what the hell? He called them low-class westernized peasants <laughs> for not liking his cooking. He made a huge stink about us refusing to eat what he cooked. Because he was incredibly rude during his tirade at our parents, he did not get any of the pizza that we ordered. Oh my god, this is amazing. When he was 20, he came home from the army. He wanted to cook breakfast for us. I was hesitant about eating anything that he cooked, but I figured he could be nice and at least try. Surely he got better to keep from poisoning himself. Nope. He made breakfast. The toast was good. The sausage wasn't fully cooked because that is the best way and of course it won't make you sick. Ew. The scrambled eggs looked weird. They were grey and they were gritty. He explained that his new recipe for scrambled eggs made them so much better. Instead of milk, he used coffee <laughs> and used some of the grounds for texture. Oh, ew. It was just so awful. Our parents couldn't believe that he wanted us to eat that. And of course he had a tantrum because we were being rude, low class and horrible for not eating the food that he put in front of us. You know, that he slaved over for a whole half an hour. It took quite a long time for either of my parents to want to eat anything that he cooked. Yeah, I probably wouldn't eat anything that he ever cooked ever again, to be completely honest. If somebody thinks that it's a good idea to put coffee grounds in something for texture, I don't really ever want to eat their food. And I think that's fair enough, to be honest. This next one is called Kevina, who was completely unaware of all other cultures and religions. I once knew this girl in passing who was the embodiment of what one would call uncultured. She had graduated college as a theatre major and had an internship in Broadway, so it's not like she was uneducated. Here are a few of my favourite incidents. I have a tattoo of a moon and stars on my ankle, just a simple crescent moon with two stars around it in a full black outline. Seeing this, she immediately asked if I was Muslim, despite knowing me for two full months and knowing that I was pagan. And a lot of followers of the Quran believe that tattoos are expressly forbidden. When this was brought up, she was unaware what the Quran was and said, is that some place in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, okay, well. Another instance, we were talking about the Lion King and we mentioned how we loved that they use Swahili. She thought that we were messing with her and making the language up, she proceeded to yell at us to stop making fun of the African people by making up words and implying that it was part of their culture. It took two hours to convince her that the language was real. She also was absolutely convinced that Jewish people were mythical and the, you know, was a fiction story. Every photo or video I showed her, she believed was just a fiction movie. She believed this because, and I quote, I've never met a Jewish person. Two of the people in that room were Jewish. <laughs> 
Oh my god. Yeah, that's very alarming. <laughs> but also kind of hilarious in a way. Hilarious in the way of like, you know, how do these people even exist? Okay, the next one is called Kevin thinks that vegan is a vegetable. Well, here we go. This is a pretty short story amongst many at my four years of working at a gourmet chocolate shop. I tell this story to a lot of people because I always get asked how working at that store was. Working at a chocolate store seems fun to the average person, I guess. But this took place about three years ago. I was working the register one afternoon by myself and this guy comes in with his wife. We sold a variety of chocolate including vegan, nut-free and sugar-free for those with health issues or if you prefer not to eat animal products. Well, this guy saw the big vegan sign we had that clearly described what our vegan chocolate is made of. We had a lot of informational signs for all of the different types of chocolate that we had. I guess he just didn't want to read the information on the sign because the next thing that came out of his mouth was, so I know that vegan is a vegetable, but what kind is it? I thought he was joking at first since he had this big goofy smile on his face, so I laughed. The smile kind of faded into a questioning look like he was expecting me to answer his question. He just stared at me and so did his wife. I stared back because I was completely taken aback at the realisation that this guy was being serious. I had no idea what the hell to even say to that. I didn't want to correct him because he looked so stupid no matter how I'd phrase it. So I just awkwardly stared at him and nervously laughed. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not so sure what it is myself. I mostly said this so he didn't look like an absolute idiot and to hopefully diffuse the conversation. Well, it worked because they ended up buying an entire pound worth of just vegan chocolate. Why I was ringing them up, the guy turned to his wife and said, vegan is so good in chocolate. They paid and left. I was basically standing there absolutely confused at what the hell just happened. There's some poor guy out there in his late 30s that genuinely thinks that vegan is a vegetable. I think about him sometimes. I wonder if he ever figured out what it really was. Yeah, and not just that, but their wife as well. That's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, like that both of them thought it was a vegetable. What the hell? We'll do one more and this is a short one. My brother drove to a car dealership instead of school presenting to you the dumbest man on earth, Kevin. My brother Kevin, 16 male, has class every day first period in an auditorium and his schedule abbreviates it to Audi as shortened. There is a brand of car called Audi, so where is this going? This mother flipper drove to the nearest Audi car dealership and stood around for two hours wondering why his teacher wasn't there before calling me in tears, asking me to call the school, at which point we figured things out. Now I would like to believe that this one is fake, only because I don't imagine that there's somebody out there that would actually think like this. And if there is, that kind of scares me. So yeah, I'm praying that this one is not real. First one is called The Time Kevin Kevin cost our company over five grand. I work for a small trucking company with maybe 15 trucks total. About a year ago, we hired Kevin. He bragged about his driver's experience and seemed to be fairly proficient. However, he struggled with a few things, mainly finding trailers in the yard. I once had to get out of my truck and point to the trailer number with my flashlight that was on the corner of the trailer in big black numbers. He also struggled with navigation, which isn't a good thing if you're a professional driver. Well, one night Kevin had to bring a 53 foot trailer down to a very large warehouse to pick up a load of furniture and then come back to the hub. Kevin took a wrong turn and ignored the multiple and clear signage warning <laughs> that the road was unpassable for semi-trucks. Kevin drove down the gravel road and expertly navigated tight corners for at least two miles. Kevin then tried to take the curve that did him in, the one that's impossible for a semi-truck to clear, <laughs> and got stuck in the ditch. Kevin had to call for an after-hours truck and then, of course, was too scared to help the tow truck never <laughs> was too scared to help the tow truck navigate his rig back onto the main road. They had to call a second tow truck out there to get into the driver's seat to help back the rig up. The towing bill was well over five 
five grand and Kevin was a let go and I never found out if he was hired somewhere else. The worst part of this, it was my day off and Kevin was in my truck that night. Pro tip, when the signs say that a road is impassable for trucks, they mean it. Wait a second, so like they got a job as a truck driver when they weren't really supposed to? How do you even get into a position where you can do that if you don't actually know how to drive a truck really? <laughs> That's funny, but also kind of terrifying. Okay, the next one is called My Cousin Doesn't Believe in Vegetarianism. So as you might have seen in my last post, my cousin is a total Kevin. It doesn't just end in his driving. He also doesn't believe in vegetarianism. Two years ago at Christmas 2019, my mum brought a mixed salad for the extended family, mostly my aunts. My one aunt is a vegetarian. You might see where this is going. The whole family sits down and my aunt's plate consisted of only salad, green beans and some of my grandma's famous mashed potatoes. As we begin to eat, my cousin looks up at my aunt and asks, so why didn't you get any of the turkey or ham I brought? She looked at him strangely, because I'm a vegetarian. Kevin has a confused look on his face, but you're eating plants? My aunt looks even more confused. <laughs> plants are vegetables. Kevin gives her the most narcissistic smirk and says, <laughs> no they're not, they're meat. The whole family looks at Kevin, who is looking like the just told a child that Santa isn't real. <laughs> My uncle chimes in, Kevin, plants are vegetables, not animals. They don't contain meat. Well, they're alive, aren't they? So that means they're animals. We try to explain to him that just because they're alive doesn't mean they're animals. A tree's animals, Kevin, huh? No, trees aren't alive. We gave up after 45 minutes of arguing <laughs> and went to open presents. Thank you for reading. Oh my god. <laughs> Just the fact that they're so confident about it is so amazing. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're eating vegetables and they're alive, which makes them animals. So that means that vegetables are made out of meat. Ah, uh, no, buddy. <laughs> the next one is called Roommate it Doesn't Understand Cordless Kettles, Among Other Things. I've had a Kevin roommate in his 30s and even if we generally came along and he was able to manage his life just fine, there were quite a few Kevin things he said or did. One, when I moved in, I moved into his old bedroom and he switched into the other room. In his old room, there was a roll-up window blind. The first thing I did was attach a string to it so I could reach it when it was rolled up. He said, oh, that's smart. I had to climb onto the radiator for five years to get it. <laughs> no way. Number two, our water kettle broke and he went out to get a new one. He texts me, I bought a cordless kettle, but this is a scam. There's actually no cord. How should this even work? It's still packed on the kitchen counter, but I'll return it tonight. So I come home, curious what this is about. I open the box, I open the kettle, and inside the kettle, I find the base station where you put the cordless kettle while it's heating. Wait, what? <laughs> this person is amazing. Three, he didn't want to ask his tax advisor for advice because this would come out eventually and the boss of the tax advisor's firm would rat me out to the, ta <laughs> to the tax authorities. Four, his manual car had an issue so it would stall when it was idling and stopped and it wouldn't start back up right away which was really inconvenient. So instead of completely stopping at a red light, he would drive back and forth and, <laughs> what? <laughs> and back and forth on the spot. You mean somebody when they're like cycling and they have their feet stuck in those things? <laughs> no way. That doesn't even make any sense. Surely in the time that it takes to put the car into reverse, it'd just stall anyway. Get your car fixed. Oh my god. And it's not like you can do that if there's a car behind you. <laughs> None of this makes any sense. His way to clean the toilet was to sit down in front of it, dip some toilet paper into the toilet water and use it to wipe down the seat and the bowl. When he was supposed to clean the kitchen, bathroom and hallway, he would take one of those flat mops on a stick, get it wet and push it through the entire 
space in one run. <laughs> no rinsing, no back and forth, all in one smooth trajectory. From there, he would push the mop on its stick into the closet where it sat dirty and wet until next time. When there were still wet spots on the floor, he would use a tea towel, wipe the floor, and then wipe the kitchen <laughs> and then wipe the kitchen counter with the same towel. I complained that this was unsanitary, and he said, but I just mopped the kitchen floor. It's still dirty. <laughs> the last one, Kevin had trouble with his printer's ink running out constantly, so he went to get a new one. Came back proud because he purchased a printer where he could recharge the ink over the internet. <laughs> Actually, just a subscription for overpriced ink. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so funny. I feel like it'd be so entertaining to live with someone like that. That's like living with Homer Simpson. This one is called Kevina Looks for the Sun at Night. I knew this Kevina during my freshman year of my undergraduate degree. I came from a small town and I thought I had encountered my share of ignorance, but Kevina took the cake. Kevina was a typically sheltered Christian and had all the hang-ups that came with that. She was sure that the spells in Harry Potter were real <laughs> and would work if you said them out loud, so she refused to read the books, but was quite content to watch the movies and let actors say the spells <laughs> because she wasn't the one saying them. This has to be a joke. While watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith, she said she hated Angelina Jolie because she was a home wrecker. No word on how she felt about Brad Pitt's role in that. <laughs> Dropped out of comparative religion course on the first day because she wasn't ready for that right now. That being awareness of other religions. <laughs> when we went to the dance club, she would stand on the side of the dance floor and waggle her finger at people dancing no way <laughs> to Katy Perry's I Kissed a Girl. <laughs> Is this like Marge Simpson? This girl had never written an essay during her whole public school career. It took three people to help her through her first draft. One night, we all went out to the park to watch a meteor shower. The rest of us were pointing out the constellations and she was looking for the sun because she knew that the sun was a star. She shared with us the story of her first boyfriend, a guy who apparently faked his own death to avoid dating her. Whether this was true or he just used her extremely gullible nature to his advantage, we'll never know. After university, I lost touch with her but continued to hear tales from mutual friends. This Kevina never changed in the following years. She was a bridesmaid in a friend's wedding. Her major concern was that the bride's dress was a beautiful champagne colour <laughs> rather than the white because people wouldn't think the bride was pure. The bride was also one of those no sex before marriage types and made sure everyone knew that. After the wedding reception, she started collecting the table centerpieces so she could reuse them for her own wedding. <laughs> she wasn't even in a relationship. When she did finally meet someone, she invited him to a party with all of her old uni friends. She claimed he was the one, but she didn't actually know his last name. <laughs> but for the grace of God goes Kevina. Oh wow, that was so good. That one about the Harry Potter spells being real, that is so amazing. Yeah, I think this is a good time for some wholesome memes, guys. Five-year-old me, a chocolate, the doctor rewarding me for being a good boy. <laughs> I am a good boy. <laughs> now, give me all of your chocolate. There's still a few days left for Valentine's Day. I might get someone. The girl who I had a crush on asked me out. Oh, that's so exciting. All the best with that. That's so great. When I put my clothes away immediately after taking them out of the dryer, my parents, right thing you did. Proud I am. Once again, I'm a good boy. Now give me some chocolate. Laying in bed, taking a photo of yourself. Oh, now I'm gonna make it my lock screen. <laughs> That's so cute. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. This is a bloody awesome subreddit. I love reading stories. Actually, do you guys know of any other subreddits like this one with long form content? There's the neckbeard stories. There's this one. There's entitled 
titled Parents. I really do like the long story format. It's really nice to just relax and read stories. So yeah, let me know down below, guys. Today's comment of the day goes to Princess Rebel. Hello, everyone. I wish everyone a wonderful day. And even if it isn't, I'm sending you positivity and happiness. Thank you so much for just commenting that. Like, that means so much to me. And I'm sure it means a lot to everybody else as well. Our community is so wholesome and so awesome. I'm so proud of us. Keep up the good work, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm going to go watch some Simpsons. Have a beautiful rest of your day, guys. And I'll see you next time.